Welcome to Arkham Horner. Uh, this video will be showing you how uh, combat works in the Dark Eye role-playing game. Um, so first of all, uh, let's take a look at a uh, player character. <clears throat> we'll open it up here on Foundry. Um, now, from my previous video, I went over the character sheet and everything like that, stats and whatnot. Uh, so we'll go to uh, the combat tab for this. Now, as a character, they will have various weapons that they use, uh, some more effective than others. Uh, for instance, this character is better at bow than with their knife. Uh, the damage with the bow is better than the knife. Uh, they have a bit of armor here. Now, armor in the Dark Eye, basically, this protection here is minus whatever damage is taken uh, from an attack from an enemy. You got special combat abilities. These may or may not pop up when uh, you're doing the combat, which I'll get to and show you. <clears throat> and I went over the uh, combat techniques to better your weapons. So in this case, this person is very good with the bow. So it will make sense that their bow stat here is, uh, the more it's uh, increased, the better chances of hitting will become. Okay? Uh, so we'll just minimize this character right here. And we'll go to our battle board of sorts here where... Uh, I do my random encounters as Jim. Now, as a player, you won't see a lot of this stuff here. This is the GM side, of course. Uh, I also have a mod called the Battle Carousel, which is uh, this kind of thing right here, which I'll show you. Now, normally, uh, it's just straight foundry, you'll have your encounter window here with this, this symbol with the kind of cross swords and I'll show the initiative order and who's next and so forth. Uh, so again, we'll get to that. So let's uh, use our player character here and uh, we'll make him fight a, a bandit here because a bandit's coming to town looking for a fight. Okay. I will uh, open that character sheet up of the enemy. So we'll go to his combat tab, and he'll he's using a dagger and a warhammer. Does use a composite bow and does have leather armor. <coughs> Pardon me. I am getting over a cold, so uh, hopefully I won't hack too much. So let's unpause the game for one. Now, let's zoom in here. And go over tokens. So when you right click on the token in Foundry, you'll have these symbols pop up. Okay. Uh, this here is the life points. This here uh, at the top is magic points or AE right here. Uh, this over here, uh, don't use. Uh, this over here, this cog is settings. So if you click on that, you'll have a bunch of token settings. Your parents, you can give them light, uh, how much they shine or see, the color of the light. You can have a light animation um, around the token. This is mainly for the GM to manipulate enemies and stuff like that. So we'll uh, go through that at another time. Uh, this uh, means that you target the token, meaning that... Whoever is attacking them will be targeting that token. You can turn it on and off. Uh, this token here on the uh, top right means that you can make the token vanish. So it's not on screen for the players to see in case you want to have like a ambush style encounter. Uh, this is all the status effects. So prone and... Um, on fire, surprised, etc., etc. Uh, these are situational for what uh, status effect may be on the token in combat or going into combat. Obviously, defeated means they're they're dead. 
so here is where uh, you start your initiative order. So we'll just put on this initiative and counter tracker here. And we'll click this button. And as you can see, the uh, carousel. Now, again, this is a mod that I've added to Foundry, so this is not in the normal game. But if you're in a normal game, this is where they'll pop up. Um, the symbols here are you can toggle visibility to see if the token is people can see it or not. Sometimes there'll be a spell where you cast a visibility on yourself. This is a neat way of kind of having that happen. Um, you can mark defeated on the token in case something happens, uh, like they die of poison or something. Uh, pinging a combat, this is again a uh, mod where uh, you show what token, is, you know, what turn the token is. So it's nice when you have multiple uh, tokens of the same looking picture and you want to find where this particular token is on the map. This is a good way to do so. Uh, and then uh, you can have uh, various symbols here. Uh, so this one here is uh, encumbrance. So the character is carrying too much. So that could factor into roles, which I'll get into. Uh, next, we're going to put him, the bandit, on the uh, counter tracker. And uh, so normally... Without this module installed, just ignore this at the moment, you will roll your initiative. Uh, normally, the GM will roll for the enemies and see who goes first and who goes second and so on. Uh, once that happens, you hit be begin combat, and then it'll begin combat. So you'll see over here with the carousel sake, all that stuff. So in combat, you have two free actions, movement and attacking. Uh, or you can hold, which is wait, uh, your turn. So situational that you're an archer, let's say, and you want to wait till you get a really good shot in an enemy, perhaps. You could just hit wait and, and it'll come to your turn when a situation arises. It's kind of like D&D in a way where you hold a turn and then you can kind of have a reaction to something going on. So anyway, the bandit is first, and uh, he is uh, using his composite bow to attack the player character. So uh, what you do is, uh, again, I'm ignoring this carousel here because it's a mod, and I don't want to confuse you too much. Uh, but uh, so what you do here is the bandit is targeting player character so you make a target by hitting this here you can also use the sidebar here to select a target just hover over the token and hit the button and it'll do it and another easier way is you hover over a token and hit the letter T and it will automatically target that token for the person or enemy that is up to target what it's going to attack okay so with the bandit here, um, he is going to use his composite bow to attack. So see now that the player character is targeted, you would hit the attack. Red would be, in this case, uh, an attack roll for each of your weapons. And then, so these uh, modifiers here will be for status effects and so forth that are possibly on this particular uh, attacker. So you may have an encumbrance of minus one, which he doesn't, so that's why it's clicked off. However, uh, he gets a minus four for uh, his defense kind of deal. Uh, so that stays on. The, all this is um, automatically done for you in Foundry, which is really cool. So when there is a status effect that gets put on this target, uh, it'll be factored in. Um, visibility is if you have clear sight, if there's slight impairment, so perhaps the target is behind a rock or something. Uh, shape 
is uh, basically like an invisible, someone's invisible, barely shaped, but it's, it's more of an invisibility state, perhaps they can't see it, and total invisibility is where they can't see the target. So you would cl uh, click on one of these. Obviously, in this case, he has clear sight on the target, so you would leave it at clear sight. Distance, close, far. So he's at medium range, so obviously he would get a medium uh, to hit. Close, he would get a plus two. Far, he would get a negative because he's uh, far away. So... Obviously, in this case, he's medium. Size category is the target he's trying to hit. So it could be like a bug at minus eight. Uh, small would be a goblin. Medium would be humanoid. Large would be like an ogre. And huge would be a dragon, as an example. So we keep it at medium. So the aim, it's unaimed. Uh, if you want to really uh, aim very well, you have to spend an action or two actions to get a better result. So unaimed, you get no encumbrances. Target, uh, whether they're moving slowly, motionless, moving quickly. Okay. Now keep in mind, this is all from a ranged weapon, so you wouldn't have most of this stuff on a melee weapon. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, shooter, if the shooter's stationary, walking or running, you would have your encumbrances here. Uh, walking, running, minus four. Uh, if you're on, if this target is shooting while they're on a mount, uh, whether they're, they're, they're on a walking, the horse is walking, or on a gallop. So this is if they're on a mount. They're not, so we leave it at standing still. Um, shooting in the melee is if the target has more targets around them and they're trying to hit that target while there's other obstacles in the way. So if you're doing that, you would click shooting in the melee. And uh, zigzagging is if um, it's situational, uh, if you're going around corners, uh, trying to hit something. Nah. So uh, right now we we'll leave as is. And we'll give it a roll. So we'll go to our rolling screen here. Remember, it's your first one in the chat bar. So he was successful in hitting the player character, as you can see. No modifiers. So when a enemy is attacking a player character, the player character will see this on their side of the screen. Uh, whereas a reactionary, so that person will hit the reaction, and they'll have options on how to defend themselves. Now, ranged, like arrow shots and fireballs and anything ranged, like a boulder, need to be dodged. They cannot be parried, unless uh, there is a special skill where, uh, for your arrows, as an example, where... Someone can deflect arrows or um, catch arrows. Uh, but in this case, this uh, player character doesn't have that ability, so they need to dodge that ranged attack, so they hit the dodge. Again, when you're dodging, same deal. If there's any encumbrances, they're listed here in the modifiers. You can click off and on these things. Uh, situational for that. Your GM will let you know, of course. Defensive posture is a special ability that this player character has, so we'll click that on. Uh, they will be here. Same for attacking. They will be on the right side here for any possible attacking modifiers, which we'll also get to with the player character itself. So anyway, we're just going to go and roll the defense to see if this player character defends itself. Does not. Takes 10 damage. So what we do here is we go down to the life points, which is always at the bottom, and we do a minus 10. And there we go. Now, see that pain pop up there? There are four levels of pain during combat. So when damage is taken by 
uh, players and enemies and monsters. There are four levels of pain, and they each go by sections of your life points. So level one would be, uh, 20, think of it as like 25 and then uh, 50 and then 75 and then zero. So there are four levels of pain. Depending on how much life they have, pain will either come quicker than uh, obviously monsters or uh, people with heavier life points. Um, so in this case, uh, this player character is almost half, so they will be at a level two of pain. Now, pain's bad because pain gives you negatives when you're attacking and when you're defending. Because you think about it, you've been. Uh, caught up and shot and all that stuff and you're possibly bleeding out or or something so think of it as like a stamina now when you get to the uh, level four of pain and you're near death with your character or uh, enemy is near that point too uh, on their turn they have to roll a body control check skill which will be in your skills so I'll bring this player character up because it's going to be their turn. Um, anyway, the bandit is done on their turn, so they would just end their turn. And the player character would go up. So see how there's a 1 by this token here, which is a really great thing about this carousel mod. It actually shows you the level of pain that they're at and stuff. So anyway, uh, body control um, would be here under skills and you roll that but only if you're at level four pain right now this character has not reached that threshold yet but they're getting there so we'll go uh, with the player character's turn so what they do is they have uh, they don't have a range weapon although if a character has a throwing trait like a knife and they want to throw it there's that possibility uh but obviously you know there's uh no way that he's going to throw away his bow to try and hit someone so you know it's common sense in that regard uh there are throwing daggers throwing knives but again you need uh, as far as character creation you need to have that ability to do so uh, you can um throw weapons without the ability but it'll be at an extreme disadvantage so what we're going to do is we're going to have for the sake of argument mr akuma as it were target this guy okay we're gonna do that and i'm just going to use the carousel here just for quickening things up so He's going to use his elf bow on uh, there. Now you can see he's got a level of pain, so that's minus one as a negative. Minus four with uh, defense here. Uh, but he's going to use his pierce shot. See, as you can see, there's a throw, which would you, you would use it for a knife or a throwing dagger if you were. But he's using his uh, bow here, so a precise shot would go. Again, visibility factors in. For that uh, distance is close so it adds in that automatically size category my name etc etc um so uh instead of uh, me shooting at myself <laughs> i'm gonna take this off now normally um when I'm running combat, I would uh, hover over a token and press T to uh, target who I'm hitting. Uh, so that's why you saw two kind of like targeted tokens there. I didn't want to shoot myself because that would be silly. So I'll we'll roll an elf bow here. We'll uh, throw in a precise shot. Let's see what happens. It's always successful so as a gm this sort of obviously appear on my side so the bandit has to defend itself i had reaction obviously it's a range shot uh so i have to do the dodge again the minuses are taken into account 
And he failed, so he takes nine damage. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, because the player character didn't move yet, we're going to move him here. And let's say that we're going to represent this as a boulder for fun. And I'll show you why. So, Akuma's turn ends. We hit end turn. You can do the same on your uh, counter tracker here, where end turn as well. But I'm just doing the carousel for simplicity. So, we'll go back to here now. Just pretend that this bandit thing here is a boulder, and uh, we're going to use that as a factor for the attack of the bandits. So the bandit's cocky, so he's going to try and hit Uma here with his bow. So, uh, one thing to keep in mind with bulls is that uh, they do use ammo. So you are shooting arrows, and it does keep track of that. Uh, if you run out of arrows, you obviously can't shoot anymore. Uh, and then there's the factor of collecting arrows after combat. That's really up to the GM's discretion. So, anyway, uh, the band is attempting to shoot. So visibility here will be a slight impairment. Because we're using uh, an example here that Akuma's behind some cover. And... We're going to have it so that uh, he's going to move quickly as he's trying to get a better shot on Kuma. And the shooter. So let's say Kuma's behind the with the target. So Kuma dove behind the boulder. So that's what moving quickly would be. Right? Uh, stationary will be to try and get a better position. So uh, this is all the moment. I don't need that. It's not zigzag. Uh, wall. Uh, but we'll leave that for now and see what happens. So he was successful in hitting. So picture this bandit kind of trying to get a better position by moving here. Akuma was over here, let's say, and dove at the same time behind this boulder, quote, boulder. Uh, but the bandit seemed to get a good shot off. So reactionary, which would be a dodge. So there's the pain factoring, the minus four, the encumbrance, the defensive posture is on. Now keep in mind for these specialties, turn them off and on. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't want to use a special ability because uh, such as uh, onslaught, which means you get a better, a worse offensive position. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, there is no attack from behind. I mean, that you have to factor in as well when being attacked from behind because that adds or minuses and defensive and attacking as well. And that's self-explanatory. So there's a checkbox there for that. But we're going to roll and see what happens. So the bandit hit the player character and put him at one hit point. Wow. All right. So at this point, this player character is... See how the resist check came up? Pain at level 4. And what's really neat about foundries, this is all automated, so it automatically does it before their turn. So we're going to end the bandit's turn because bandit went. But uh, we're going to jump to our... our we're going to move the boulder rotations, and we're going to do the self-control to see if he passes out. So that means 
He's incapacitated and passed out. Now, situational. The bandit could come along and finish him off. Or the bandit could say, haha, I won and took off. But essentially, because they're two combatants only, uh, battle's over. And so you hit end combat. And do what needs to be done. Okay? So that is combat uh, in a nutshell for the dark eye. Uh, to, uh, there's multiple factors involved, of course. Uh, don't let uh, it intimidate you as far as you know, playing the game. Because as a beginner, you want to uh, grab the game uh, and get an understanding. And uh, playing the game uh, is actually better to learn the game. Uh, I mean, you have your books, your quotes, but I find that for beginners, playing the game and helping them out along the way is definitely a way to go for the dark. So anyway, um, that is combat 